Now, I've reviewed my share of two-in-one convertibles that range in all sorts of prices from the budget to the premium. I have the HP Spectre X360 with the OLED display and the RTX 3050 GPU on the way to the studio, so expect a full review of that in the next few days. But in the meantime, I wanted to show you one from Dell. It's the Inspiron 147415. It's a two-in-one convertible that's running the Ryzen processor. We're gonna get into which one and all the specs in just a minute, but it's actually a pretty good budget offering from Dell. It doesn't break the bank, but you're getting some premium build quality. You're getting a really nice overall package. Let's find out if this fits the bill. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Dell Inspiron 147415 two-in-one convertible. Coming up. And as we take a look at the specs, I want to let everybody know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Dell, I'm not being sponsored by Dell, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Dell is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. This review unit is on loan from Dell, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Pricing starts at $799.99 US. For those interested, check out that link below for more information and where you can buy one. Now my review unit as configured comes in at $999 and that comes with the AMD Ryzen 5700U mobile processor. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. You get a 65 watt USB-C power adapter and they also give you the extension cord as well. You get some documentation which includes warranty and safety information. And of course you get the unit itself. And it's a very well-made machine with a very rigid design with very little flex in the chassis. This is a blend between aluminum and plastic, but it feels more high-end than the price tag would suggest. It feels like a really premium laptop. Again, I like that. It comes in two different colors, pebble green and what I have here today, Miss Blue. Now this Miss Blue is very classy looking. It's a really nice color. Overall, gives it a nice sleek and modern look. And at 3.43 pounds or 1.56 kilograms, this is a very portable device. This is going to be easy to take with you on the go. Just throw it in your bag and you have a very versatile two-in-one on the road. Now, Dell also sent over the Ultra Sharp 4K webcam. Now, this is a great solution if you really want high quality video and audio coming from your laptop and you don't want to use the built-in solution. So this is a really good solution in my opinion. Now, of course, this uh, will give you that really high quality, especially for Zoom calls as we find ourselves in this work from home environment, in this hybrid work environment. Now, I'm going to show you the difference between the built-in webcam and this webcam later on in this video. So stay tuned. All right, let's check out the port selection. Let's start off on the left side. We get an HDMI 1.4B port. Next to that is a USB-A 3.1 Gen 1 port. Next to that is a USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 port. That supports power delivery and display port out. Now, on the other side, or the right side, you get your micro SD card reader, a USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A port, and then finally, your audio jack. Now, of course, there's no Thunderbolt 4 port on this since this is running an AMD processor. But all in all, it's a pretty good port selection. Now, to get inside this laptop, it's actually pretty easy. You just need to remove the screws all around the bottom plate, pop off the bottom plate with either your hands or your pry tool. Be very careful, of course. And once you do, you're inside this laptop. Now, the good news is there is upgradable RAM on this. And as you can see, this is the rank 16 RAM, not the faster rank 8 RAM that we'd like to see. But at this price point, I'm not surprised by it. It'll be good nonetheless. And my review unit has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 RAM running in dual channel mode. And you could also upgrade the SSD. Now my review unit comes with 512 gigabytes of PCIe NVMe Gen 3 SSD storage. And as you can see from these reads and writes, very good reads and writes. But of course, these are Gen 3, not the faster Gen 4 we've been seeing as of late. But at this price point, I'm not surprised to see Gen 3. But nonetheless, these are good speeds. You don't have to worry. Now, when it comes to wireless, this sports Wi-Fi 6 along with Bluetooth 5 combo. And the good news is it's not soldered into the motherboard. It's slotted in. So if you need to change out the Wi-Fi down the road, you have that option. 
And while we're inside, you'll notice that it has a single fan for cooling. We'll get into the thermals later on in this video. And you'll also will notice that it has a 54 watt hour battery. We'll get into the battery life and charging times as well. All right, let's check out the display. And what we're looking at here is a 14 inch full HD display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. And yes, that is a 16 to nine aspect ratio. It's a multi-touch display. It's also a glossy display. So you're gonna see some glare and reflections in certain lighting conditions, something to keep in mind. Now this is an IPS display and it's actually pretty decent, although you will notice that it doesn't have the greatest coverage of the color gamut. Now this is not geared towards the content creator that needs the great coverage of the color gamut, but I'd like to see it a little bit higher, but it does have decent color accuracy, 1.96, anything below two is considered color accurate. It also has excellent black level, 0.26, the lower the better. But my biggest gripe with this display is that it just doesn't get bright enough coming in at only 245 nits, shy of that 300 nit threshold that I'd like to see. Now, indoors will be perfectly fine doing Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, consuming media. There's no problem with that. But when you go outdoors with the glossy display and the fact that it doesn't get very bright, you're going to have some issues. So just keep that in mind. But indoors, you're perfectly fine. So this is the front-facing camera, the internal camera of the Dell Inspiron 14, the 7415 2-in-1 that we have here new for 2021. This is a 720p webcam, a non-Windows Hello webcam. That means you cannot log in with face recognition. There is a fingerprint scanner that is uh, on, on this laptop, of course. The power button doubles as that fingerprint scanner, and it worked well. And you can log in with Windows Hello that way. But there is a shutter switch on this, so if you need more security and privacy, you have that option. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. So this is the Dell UltraSharp webcam, a 4K webcam, external of course, that plugs into the USB port of this Inspiron 14 2-in-1. I like this external solution. What do you think about this 4K 2160p resolution? What do you think about the audio quality of the internal mics? Let me know in that comment section below. But I'm liking this solution because it really is a much better quality than you would get with a built-in webcam. The only thing now, of course, you have to take this with you. Now, the build quality of this ultra-sharp webcam is first-rate. It's all metal. It's solid. It's well-built. And you would expect that at this price point. Now, there's a lot of features that I won't be able to cover today in this video, but I will be doing a separate video on this Dell ultra-sharp webcam. So stay tuned. That will be coming very soon. Now, this being a two-in-one convertible means you can put this into the different modes. The tent mode is great for consuming media. Watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube has been great. The same could be said of the stand mode. But of course, you could always put it into the tablet mode since this is a convertible. And when in tablet mode, this is going to be great for use with the pen. Now, Dell didn't send over a pen, but you can use a Surface Pen. I have my old Surface Pen right over here. Using it to take notes, sketching out artwork, it's working well. Uses the Microsoft Pen Protocol 2.0 standard. So anything that's related to that will be able to be used on this device. So taking notes, sketching out artwork is definitely very good with this two-in-one convertible. And for those wondering, no, you can't quite open it with one finger. You'll have to use two hands. Now, once you do open it up, of course, you are greeted by the keyboard. Now, this is a backlit keyboard. So if you want to get work done in a dark room in a dimly lit environment, you can. And of course, it had pretty decent tactile feedback. I thought the key travel was good and it was pretty comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. I would say all in all, this is a very good keyboard. And it has a precision touchpad that I thought was super responsive. I didn't have any issues in terms of scrolling and all the gestures work as you'd expect. Okay, so this is running the AMD Ryzen 7 5700U mobile processor with integrated Radeon graphics. Now my unit, as I mentioned earlier, has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 RAM running in dual channel mode. Now, as you can see from these benchmark results, not the greatest performance out there right now here as we are in early 2022, but these are definitely decent performance numbers. You'll definitely be able to do Microsoft Office email web browsing with no problem. You can even game on this laptop if you lower the settings uh, on certain titles, you could definitely get playable frame rates. Unfortunately, there's no Thunderbolt 4 port on this, so you cannot really connect this to an external GPU. So that's out of the cards as far as this laptop is concerned. But again, for the occasional game here and there, this definitely could handle the job. And when I ran the Prime 95 stress test to see if this will thermal throttle under maximum load, the CPU would turbo boost to 3.8 gigahertz for about five seconds and reach a core temperature of 90 degrees Celsius. Then it would drop down and stabilize to 2.7 gigahertz and maintain a cooler 69 degrees Celsius.
So the takeaway is it didn't really throttle all that much, maintaining pretty decent clock speeds. And when it comes to surface temperatures, it didn't get overly hot, getting a little bit warm by the keyboard and on the underside, as you can see here. And that single fan for cooling will kick in under heavy load, but I thought it was actually pretty quiet, didn't get overly loud, so it wasn't too distracting. Now, battery life on this Inspiron has been excellent, getting over 11 hours on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. So you expect in real world mixed usage anywhere from 8 to 9 hours, which is actually pretty good. And they do give you a 65 watt USB-C power adapter in the box, and it takes a little less than two hours to give you a full charge. And the nice pleasant surprise has been the audio. The two bottom facing speakers were actually sounding pretty good, has decent volume, a hint of bass, and the mid sounded good. I would say overall, it filled up a room pretty nicely. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Dell Inspiron 14 2-in-1 laptop with the AMD Ryzen processor here in early 2022? And I got to say, I really like it. It's got a nice, strong chassis. I really like that mist blue finish as well. Good color wear on that. And I like the good, strong CPU performance out of that Ryzen processor, although a little bit below what we're seeing now out of that 12th gen from Intel. We'll have more on that very soon. Good audio quality out of the speakers, especially for its size. Good battery life, pretty much all day battery life is what we want to see we get it small footprint in terms of the size of this laptop it's thin and light easy to take with you on the go it's got a comfortable touchpad it's got a comfortable keyboard it's a nicely backlit keyboard that's easy to see and definitely in a dark room so that's going to be really good decent port selection upgradable ram and ssd which you know i always love the disappointing things about it of course the color space could be better it's a bit on the dim side i'd like to see it brighter 16 to 9 aspect ratio and it has a 720p webcam but that ultra sharp webcam with the 4k experience has been great you may want to use that external solution but at the end of the day, Dell went back to basics and got most of this right. They did a really good budget convertible, and I highly recommend the Inspiron 14 2-in-1 running the AMD Ryzen processor. So what do you think about the Dell Inspiron 14? That 2-in-1 convertible with that AMD Ryzen 7 processor that's a 5700U, 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 3200 RAM. It all worked well, but one of the things I love about it the most is its price. You can get it for around $799. I'll leave the latest pricing in the link below if you're interested to pick one up. Uh, they're always running sales over at Dell, so I would highly check out that link below for the latest pricing and availability. Now, as far as that 14-inch display, it's actually pretty good, although I thought the color space could be better, and I thought it could be a little bit brighter coming in at only 245 nits. I'd like to see it over 300. But overall, indoor use, it'll be perfectly fine. It is a glossy display, so you will see some glare and reflections depending on where you are in certain lighting conditions. Outdoor use, you might have some issues, as I mentioned in the video, but for general purpose use, you're going to be fine, especially at this price point. It really fits the bill. Again, I wanna know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.